Good morning, America. It's Friday, March 23rd, here in the beautiful state of South Carolina. And we have our featured guest is Tommy Windsor. He's running for clerk of court for Lexington County. And uh, Tommy, is, is this your first time to run for this, this office? Yes, this is my first time to run for clerk of court. And why, why are you running? Two reasons. Basically, uh, I feel that uh, we have a lot of inefficiency and waste in government. And I think Lexington County deserves better in their clerk of court's office and from all their elected leaders. And those are the two main reasons I'm running. And Tommy's going to talk about that more in his presentation. But uh, again, if you're visiting South Carolina, please stop by and the showings here next to the airport. And as always, it's a great day, South Carolina. Come see us. See you later. Okay. Let's move on. Our featured guest, Tommy Windsor. Tommy, he'll come up and talk about why he's running for uh, Lexington County Court of Court. Let's get Tommy around the ball. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank y'all for letting me be here today. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate Steve having invited me. And let me tell y'all something. Steve wears another hat that is very, very difficult to wear. And that hat is being chairman of the Lexington County Republican Party. I was chairman of the County Republican Party for four years, from 1997 to 2001. And let me tell y'all something. It's like herding cats sometimes. <laughs> it's a very, very difficult job. So, Steve, my hat's off to you for even wanting to have, even do it. But <clears throat> my name is Tommy Windsor, and I'm running for Lexington County Clerk of Court. And I want you to know that on day one, when I take office, I will repeal Obamacare. <laughs> I just want you to know, okay, it's going to happen. They've all been saying it, so I thought I might as well say it too. We will repeal Obamacare day one in a Windsor court administration. <laughs> so, seriously though, let me ask y'all a very important question. How many of you in this audience, by a show of hands, know what the clerk of court does? <coughs> okay, very good, very good, okay. Now the most important question, how many of you care? <laughs> okay. I care. Okay, very good. Because usually when I ask these questions in that order, so few hands come up on the second one. You think a few come up on the first one, so few hands come up on the second one because we're like, clerk of court, what does the clerk of court do? I don't really care. Well, let me just give you in a nutshell what the clerk of court does, okay? Very, very quickly, very simple explanation. The clerk of court is like the filing cabinet for the court, okay? Documents that are filed in the clerk's office, uh, the uh, pleadings, the lawsuits, uh, evidence, all that is kept at the clerk's office. They're responsible for keeping all the records for the court. Of common pleas and the family court, they set the docket as to when the cases are gonna be heard. They pull the jury pools for the juries to be selected from. And something else they do is they're responsible for collecting and dispersing all court order child support now money. So a lot of money comes through the clerk's office. Now, the second part, why should I care? I'll tell you why you should care. Because several million dollars of your tax dollars are managed by the clerk of court. That's why you should care. That's why you should care who the register of deeds is. That's why you should care who the auditor, the coroner, Millions of your taxpayer dollars are managed by the person who is the clerk of court. And that is important. And you need to be, to be concerned about who holds that office. Now, why am I running? Two simple reasons. First of all, I want to cut waste and inefficiency in government. And having worked in government, it exists, y'all. I saw it every single day as to how we could make government run more efficiently. And you know what? For whatever reason, the decision makers just don't do it. I don't know why. They don't want to work that hard, maybe. I don't know. But it's not that difficult to, to, to cut government and make it more efficient. <clears throat> and secondly, I believe that Lexington County deserves better from its elected leaders. They deserve a lot better from their elected leaders. And those are the two main reasons that I'm running. Now, what is Tommy Windsor going to do when he gets elected clerk of court? First of all, I'll tell you this, to make the office more efficient, I want to put all public documents that are in the clerk's office online. If you can go to the clerk's office and look at it, and it's a public document, why can't you pull it up on your computer? 
They do it in Charleston County. Why can't we do it in Lexington County? Ought to be able to do that. What, how that makes that more efficient is you don't have to have people going back there and pulling files, which the more time that file is touched, the greater risk of there being a mistake being made. So it just makes it easier for a taxpayer to do business with the clerk of court's office. Isn't that what we're about? Making it easier for taxpayers to deal with their government. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clerk's budget online so that you can see how your tax dollars are being spent. It's your money. Why can't you look and see how the money in the clerk's office is being spent? And actually look at it how it's compared to other years if there's been increases or decreases. And if you've got a question about it, you can call me and I'll try to answer it for you. Or we'll get the answer. Other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my daily calendar and schedule online so that each and every citizen of Lexington County, if they want to know what Tommy's doing today, they'll be able to pull it up and look at it. They'll be able to see that, you know, one of my passions, y'all, is I officiate high school football. That's one of the things I've been doing for about 12 years. And if Tommy's got a game on Friday night, they'll be able to pull up the calendar and they'll see Tommy's got a football game at Rich Spring Manetta tonight. They'll be able to know that. You know why? Because I work for the people. They deserve to know that. They deserve to know what I'm doing on their dime. That's not too much to ask if you're elected leaders. It's really not. So, those are a few things that I want to do. Now, I'll tell you, having been involved in the party and the conservative movement as long as I have, I get really concerned when I hear elected leaders talk about their office. Okay? When we start hearing our leaders talk about their office, it's time for them to go. Because you know what? It's not their office. It's your office. You're the boss. They work for you, and elected leaders tend to forget that they work for you. You can put them in, and you can take them out. You know, we're talking about that, Mr. Burke, when stuff happens. The people, you know what, they ultimately hold the power. We can change government today if we want to do it. You know why? Because we have the vote. We can do it. And I don't like it when people talk about their office. It's time for better leadership in Lexington County. And I want to offer that leadership. Holding public office is not a birthright. If it was, we would still have a king, and we got rid of that. This is a privilege, and it's an honor to serve the people of Lexington County. I will work hard every day for you. I'm going to conduct a positive campaign that is not based on personalities, but based upon issues. Because you know what? That's what you deserve. You deserve that. You're taxpayers. You're, you're the residents of this county, and you deserve better from your elected leaders. I want to set a good example for the people of this county. Like I said, I will work hard for the people of this county, and I would really appreciate your vote and your consideration in the June primary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions? No, no questions. Um, two questions. One real quick. Is this your first run for elective office? I ran for Irmo Town Council when I was 18 years old. I had graduated from Irmo, and that fall I ran for Town Council against John Gibbons, who later, uh, I think it was 10 months later, was elected uh, mayor of uh, the town. He was 47, I was 18, I lost 390 to 200. That was a, just curiosity. The real question is this. I understand that we have folks who sit in our county jail for two or three years waiting for trial. And uh, because largely the solicitor controls the docket, what can you, as a court, do to make sure that we actually have speedy trials and that the solicitor is not set a docket because he doesn't have enough evidence yet and wait for a plea bargain or whatever it is so that we get trials that are actual speedy trials? Well, see, that's the, the unique thing about the clerk's office, okay? The clerk controls the docket of the civil court and the family court, not the criminal court. That's the solicitor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so really, I mean, it's 
up to the solicitor when he calls somebody to trial. That's not up to the clerk. I understand that's not the way it is in most of the United States. Mm -hmm. that we're kind and of unique see, here in that, that we allow the, the prosecutor to determine when he wants to go to trial. Pretty much. And see, one of the things, like in civil court, you don't have a backlog of cases really in civil court because attorneys in civil court, they like to sit. <coughs> you know, they don't want a case to sit in civil court for a long time because a lot of them get paid on contingencies and stuff. So civil court moves kind of quickly. But the criminal court. So don't you, when you uh, see a pro do you see a problem with the way that's handled in South Carolina? The, with the, with the, the way that they're the setting the trial? Setting the, the I'll tell you this, having worked in law enforcement, every case is different. And um, I will tell you sometimes that uh, it takes a while to work on a case. I've got, I've got securities cases that I work, securities fraud cases in the Attorney General's office that I work that took two and a half to three years to investigate just because of the sheer volume of stuff. Is there a problem with that? I think there should, we should look at ways to speed it up. Yeah, I think there needs to be. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's right for somebody to sit in jail for two or three years for a crime they're accused of and then, you know, ultimately what if they're exonerated and they spent two or three years in jail waiting to go to trial? Or they just make a plea bargain just or to they get just out make of jail. A plea bargain. Then the solicitor's got a 100% prosecution. So, but that's completely up to the solicitor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think, you know, we should, if we can streamline government in any way possible, if we can make it more efficient, yeah, I think we need to do that. I have a question. Uh, it's expensive to transfer uh, all your files to the Internet. How are you going to pay for that? That's my question, too. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of your documents are already scanned. It's a conflict okay? They're already scanned. So all you have to do is transfer them to put them online. So you're not talking about uh, transferring actual uh, uh, documents that uh, you can actually fill out online. You're not talking about processing the documents. You're talking about just being able to see the documents. That's right. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that do work with the clerk's office as far as wanting to pull up, say, a lawsuit or pull up a plea or some type of document like that. Those documents are actually already scanned because employees can actually pull up those documents and look at them. And why, if, if, if they're already scanned and it's a document you can look at at the courthouse, why can't you look at it on the internet? I'll give you an example. Really, this is really kind of funny. I went in to get a copy of a court document for my sister out of a, a, a case she was involved in. And I walked into the clerk's office, and after it looked like somebody had thrown a pile of live snakes into the clerk's office when I walked in the door, because everybody was looking and going, what is Tommy Windsor doing in the clerk's office? I said, well, I'm here to get a copy of a court document. And so they went and pulled the file. Okay, now that's a hand touching that file, people looking through it. And I looked through it, and I got the document I needed, and they said, well, uh, have you found everything okay? I said, yes, ma'am, I have the document right here. I said, but also, this is a copy of an order from another case that doesn't belong in here. And I'm sure that they went, oh my gosh, of all the files, Tommy Windsor came in and asked for a file that had something wrong and it had this file. And y'all, that's, that's nothing against the employee. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to happen when you got so many, that's, that's just a simple mistake. But my point is, is that when you don't have to touch that file so many times, mistakes like that don't happen. And you can pull it up online, it makes it easy. But you think there's enough money efficient. in the budget to do this? I mean, I'll tell you, government's got enough money to do whatever it needs to do. Period. Okay. It's got enough, and you know why anybody that will tell you it doesn't, I'll tell you, they're not, they're not telling you. No, the expense of doing that is not near the expense of actually placing, you're going to need a program to actually make a document where you can you know, actually do something, a process with Well, let me, let me give y'all an example of something that I thought was a really neat idea. Richland County is getting ready to have a fully electronic courtroom with the flat screen TVs in it with the computers and all that, it's going to be fully electronic, just like the stuff you see on TV. Guess who's paying for it? Nope. <laughs> the county bar. <clears throat> the lawyers are paying for it. They're paying for it. So what's to say when something comes up like 
wanting to put documents online to make it easier for attorneys and taxpayers to look at these documents, go into the Bar Association. Look, this software may cost about $15,000. I'm just, and that's just a number I'm pulling up. I'm not sure. But, I'm, you know, if it's going to cost this, is it worth the bar maybe kicking in some money to help do it? Is it worth it? Maybe so. But there's, that's part of my point is that we got to think outside the box. You know, don't always go to the taxpayer for money. We always go to the taxpayer for money. That's easy to do. Government's got plenty of money to do what it needs to do. It's got to spend it right. We may not all have plenty of money to do what we want to do, but we still spend it right. And we can do it. I don't, I don't, I don't accept the fact when people tell us we can't. You know, Newt Gingrich said something in uh, one of uh, the debates, which I thought was really, really, really a, a very insightful comment, was when I think Michelle Bachman made a comment about, oh, that, that's 10, 12, 14 years down the road. And Newt Gingrich said, you know what? No, it's not. We defeated Nazi Germany and imperialist Japan in three and a half years, and we went to the moon in 10. When we decide we want to do something, we will do it. And if we decide we want to make government smaller and we want to make it more efficient, we can do it. All we got to do is just say that's it. We made up our minds. And we are, you know, we're, we're ready to do it. And I'm ready to do it. And I want y'all to give me the opportunity to do it. So thank y'all very much. Yep. Uh, one more question. Oh, Tommy, I just want to make, I just saw this, this picture. Um, Tommy worked in Joe's campaign years and years ago. Oh, this yeah. does not imply that Joe is supporting Tommy. Joe yeah. is certainly supporting my sister. Oh, oh that clear. Well, I mean, I, I would, well, I mean, I would have thought that had been a gift. I mean, I put, I put this on there for, uh, because that picture was taken when I was 17 years old. Joe was still a senator. That is at the Lexington County Republican Convention, and I was elected third vice chairman at that convention. Yeah, the youth chairman. That was the first time we had that. And there's Jimmy. I can put my picture of him in my wedding. <laughs> but you know, I've got pictures with all kinds of Republicans. So, but uh, but there's also a picture of me as a referee. I'm a football official, as I said. So let me tell you. I know how to get into the middle of So does that imply you're endorsed by the Referees Association? <laughs> no. no, it doesn't. It doesn't. For and by the way, I also am uh, very glad that Steve gave you the title of Troublemaker because I held it for so long. I'm now very glad to pass that mantle on to you. Let's give Tommy one more round of applause.